Hi, I'm Shannon Jansen, a realtor in Portland, Oregon, and here are your 2024 real estate market predictions. So here's the great news. The outlook for the 2024 real estate market is positive. Last year, I started the year by saying there are two key factors that will shape the 2023 real estate market, and the biggest one is inflation. And that held true. We had a year of extreme volatility, the lowest home sales in over three decades, and interest rates peaked around 8% in October. However, since October's peak, we've seen interest rates decline from 8% to under 7% in just a few months. In November, we even saw a rise in existing home sales after five months of decline, proving just how interest rate sensitive most home buyers and sellers are. Overall, this recent decline in interest rates has led to an uptick in activity, and we are seeing an increase in mortgage applications, showings, buyer activity, and even prices. Here in Portland, I've recently experienced multiple offers, home selling over list price, and home selling in one weekend again. A really good sign after a somewhat slow and volatile 2023. Predictions for 2024 is that this will be known as the year of the fives. 5% 5 interest rates, five and a half million in total home sales, and 5% home price appreciation. First, let's talk about interest rates and why experts predict we'll be back in the fives soon. Two things determine the mortgage interest rate, the 10-year treasury yield and the spread above it. For the last 50 years, the 30-year mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10-year treasury yield. The average spread has been 1.72 almost every single year over these 50 years. Right now, the spread is out of whack. It widens during times of economic or geopolitical uncertainty, what's happening in the Middle East, the war in Ukraine, etc. The geopolitical uncertainty is still there, but the economic uncertainty is starting to settle. Fun fact, over 60% of economists believe we will not experience a recession and are in fact headed towards a soft landing. As inflation gets more and more under control, the spread between the 10-year treasury yield and the 30-year mortgage rate will get smaller. If the spread gets smaller, interest rates will be lower. Right now, it's at 2.79, that's the spread. If the yield is 4.13 and the spread reduces from 2.79 closer to 1.72, that will lower mortgage interest rates and if it reduces to 1.86 based on the current current yield, that gets us to a 5.99 mortgage interest rate. Add to that widespread speculation that the Fed will make additional cuts to the 10-year, and we have a very clear path towards rates in the fives. To be clear, rates will not get back to pandemic lows, nor is this something any of us should want. Seriously, if rates drop back to the threes, it's because something is very, very wrong in the world. It took a global pandemic and a complete shutdown of the world for rates to drop as much as they did. I, for one, hope to never see rates in the threes again in my lifetime. Now let's talk about inventory and how we're gonna to get to five and a half million in home sales this year. First, let's talk about the lock-in effect, which refers to homeowners and mortgage holders that are locked into such a great interest rate that they refuse to sell or move because of it. My guess is most of you can relate to this sentiment. In fact, 78.7% .7 of mortgage holders have rates less than 5%, and for the last few years, very few homeowners with a sub 5% interest rate have been willing to give that up to move. So this is one of the biggest reasons that inventory has remained so low and overall transactions have been way down. In fact, the seasonally adjusted annual rate of home sales was only 3.78 million units in December of 2023. This is even lower than the annually adjusted home sales in December of 2010 and 2011 during the Great Recession. I had to go back to December of 1991 to find a worse year. Another reminder to hug your realtor because last year was tough. Ready for some good news? Many believe we may be at our peak of the lock-in effect. Ultimately, life happens. There are plenty of instances of young couples in one-bedroom condos that are pregnant and need more space, just as there are unhappy couples that have been waiting to go their separate ways. In either of these instances, this will lead to home selling and buying transactions. We also have move up or lifestyle sellers that may be coming to terms with the fact that 3% and 4% mortgage rates just aren't returning anytime soon. As they come to terms with this, we will see them ready to sell their homes as well. Some might say, well, if all these people decide to sell at once, won't we flood the market with inventory leading to a crash in housing prices? Well, no, we won't, and it's simply because because most home sellers are also home buyers because people need a place to live. Fun fact, 
When buyers were asked what the top three reasons they paused their home search was, 72% said mortgage rates, 34% said inventory, and 17% said affordability. So yes, affordability is still a problem, and that 17% may still struggle this year. But for the 72% that paused their search because of interest rates, we can and should expect a flood of activity if the Fed does in fact cut interest rates this year. We've already felt a flurry of activity with the interest rates back in the sixes, so I can only imagine how much busier year we're going to feel when that first digit turns into a five. This year, most experts are predicting home price growth to normalize. And over the last 42 years, the normal annualized home price appreciation has been 4.92%. Home price appreciation will vary by city, neighborhood, type of property, price point, etc. But the headline here is that experts are predicting growth. That's right, I said growth. Home prices are not expected to fall, but they are down from their peak in many cases. When I'm reviewing comps with my sellers, comps being short for a competitive analysis, they are often confused why home prices have come down from their peak in spring, summer of 2022. They inevitably had a neighbor that cashed in at the high and are disappointed that they can't sell their home at the same price. The reason for this downward shift is interest rates. Here's a fun or not so fun fact. The average price for a home in Cedar Mill, Oregon is about 750,000. Assuming a 20% down payment and a $600,000 loan over a 30 year fixed conventional mortgage, here is what the payment looks like over the last few years. In April of 2022, it would have been 3,130 a month. In the fall of 2023, it would have been about $4,400 a month. Now, at a 7% interest rate, it's $3,900 a month. So the average monthly payment on a home in Cedar Mill grew by nearly $1,273 between April of 2022 and the fall of 2023. This equates to a loss of about $212,000 in buying power. This loss of buying power doesn't equate dollar for dollar to a loss in home value, but it does severely limit the buying pool and thus affect the value. 2020 and 2021 were unicorn years with interest rates around 3%. In 2022, interest rates jumped from 3% to 8% in a matter of months. There was a rush to buy the first half of the year prior to the interest rate hikes, and once interest rates hit the sixes, we saw a huge cooling off of the market. Homes sat stagnant for months when they were used to selling in days, and price cuts became necessary to get homes sold. Those price cuts really just normalized what had been a false peak, and we have seen growth since then. If you go back the last 60 years, home prices have steadily climbed with very few exceptions, the biggest of which being the housing crisis and the Great Recession of the mid-2000s. 